We're so excited to welcome Connie Ennis today for her presentation, What is a Specialty Insurance Company? And I'm going to let Mariah do the more formal introductions. First, I will say my name is Rachel. For those of you who might not have seen me before, I am the program manager at the Spencer Educational Foundation. And before we start, just Connie has mentioned that you can put your hand up at any point through the presentation or pop a question in the chat, and she will be more than happy to answer those questions during and after her presentation. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mariah Propis. Mariah is the Senior Vice President and Director of Distribution and Broker Partnerships at All Risks Limited, and she is our fearless chairperson of the Spencer Board of Directors. So Mariah, thanks for joining us today, and I'm going to hand the mic over to you. Okay, great. So Rachel, thank you so much. And hi to uh, all of our Spencer interns. Uh, it's great to see all of you virtually. And this was such a terrific opportunity for me to participate in our summer internship webinar series on a variety of fronts. But again, first and foremost, to have the opportunity to say hello to all of you. Um, and also say how thrilled we are to have you participating in what I know is a resident resonant experiential learning opportunity this summer. We had so many wonderful employers come to us with risk management internship opportunities, and it's been really gratifying for us to be able to see those employers pivot to a virtual environment and still offer to you a robust insurance and risk management experience. Um, as Rachel mentioned, I'm proud to be serving currently as chairperson of the Spencer Education Foundation. I've been involved with the board since 2013. Uh, I've served on almost every committee that we have, have a lot of pride in what we've built around our summer internship experience. And, you know, this summer is very unique for a lot of reasons, uh, but I think for organizations like Spencer that are so fortunate to have terrific partners in terms of what we do and how we continue to play our mission forward, creation of the Spencer education uh, summer, creation of a webinar series to supplement your internships, I think was an important strategic move for us. So kudos to Rachel and to Megan Miller, our executive director, for putting together a great series. Um, my involvement, um, I stepped in when we were shaping up the entire agenda and had said, hey, maybe it makes sense for us to have some of our carrier partners participate as well, because certainly they lend such a perspective on the risk management experience and the scope of responsibility. And so this week, and specifically today, we're really pleased and proud to bring Arch Insurance Company, Arch Insurance Group, to the table for all of you. They're a company of, I, I've had the pleasure of working with literally since I started in the business. I've been in the business for 27 years now. And Connie is certainly someone I've had the absolute pleasure and delight in working with and when we talked about again bringing carrier partners to the table literally my first thought was we got to get connie locked in because <laughs> a dynamite presenter she is practical and smart and resilient in terms of the way she thinks about her career and about arch and really i think a valuable asset for all of you to be connected with in terms of your careers going forward and connie has always made herself and really a hallmark, I think, of her leadership is she's an extremely accessible person. And she's done a lot to dedicate herself to emerging leadership um, and just, again, real, real innovation in the industry from talent development to what an insurance carrier does. So today, Connie serves as region executive for Arch Insurance Group's Northeast region. She leads their 15 specialty businesses. And I know it'll be really cool for you to hear about all of those businesses. They are quite an interesting collection in terms of the way they exist and come together. Um, her geography of responsibility is the Northeast. So at Arch Insurance Group, that is Maine, down through DC, out to Pittsburgh. She comes to us from just outside of Boston, Massachusetts today. And one other thing, maybe, you know, Connie, first and foremost, is really an advocate for clients and brokers. And I think that will come through in her remarks to all of you. She is extremely client-centric and has always demonstrated that incredible ability to put herself in the seat of the other person that she's supporting or selling to or renewing a policy with. And she really instills that as a philosophy in terms of how she manages and leads her team. And I think that is just such a critical leadership skill set in our industry today. And again, why I'm so pleased to have our friend Connie Ennis with us today 
And Connie, really looking forward to your time with us. And again, thank you so much. Oh, gosh, all those sweet things, Mariah. Wonderful. So um, thank you very much. It's um, great to be here. Mariah is right. Um, I think the insurance industry is one of the best industries really that anybody could think about going into. Um, almost every single day is going to be different. Uh, so many exciting, different, interesting, what do I want to grow up to be opportunities um, exist in the industry. So I do. I, I love my job. I think I've got a great job. I work for a great company, and it's uh, wonderful to be here with you today. Uh, Rachel sent the PowerPoint out to everybody. Does everybody have it? I can see some heads shaking. Um, I wasn't going to put it up on the screen. I was hoping that uh, maybe we might do some um, eyeballs so that I can gauge whether I should go more quickly or more slowly. One of the things that's really cool about the insurance industry that I like so much is it's one of building relationships. And while many of us are virtual, uh, we still have the opportunity to do a name and a face through the, the Zoom technology. So I will um, kick in. Love the industry, love everything about it. So today, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time talking about um, a specialty insurance company. Sort of what does that mean? Um, why would you as an insurance advisor or a client or somebody looking to join the industry pick a specialty company over a different company if you wanted to be on the carrier side? Go, Caitlin! Love it! Um, and then how do insurance companies differentiate? And then I'll tell you a little bit about um, Arch and how we differentiate in the space and what's important to us as a company as we finish up the PowerPoint. Um, as Rachel said in the very beginning, if anybody has any questions, fire it away on the chat or raise your hand. If I'm going too fast, if I'm going too slowly, give me some cues because this is really for you. It's obviously not for me. So we'll jump in. Um, just a couple of um, quick bits about the insurance industry at large. And I think that this is um, really pretty cool. Lots of folks at your stage in life, um, in college, looking at the world at large, everybody knows about banks and investment advisors and different manufacturers and retailers, but very little is known about um, the insurance industry and the many careers that uh, the insurance industry can offer us. So a couple tidbits. Um, the insurance industry today is about 1.3 trillion in uh, premiums. About 48% of that premium is PNC, property and casualty, so corporate, for those of you that are working on the risk management side. And then 52% um, of it is life, accident, the benefits, the health insurance side of um, things. We employ um, 2.8 million people, which is a lot of people. There are more than 6,000 insurance companies that are active in this space, and just about 40% of those, or 2,500, are in the PNC space. What I want to send you away with thinking today when you think about insurance companies is the industry itself is vibrant, it's growing, it's full of a lot of really smart, talented people who come from lots of different um, backgrounds, who want to make a difference, and that's why they choose insurance. Want to make a difference, you say? Yes, because what is insurance? It's there to problem solve. Um, we're all aware of how insurance comes to bear when there's a catastrophe, a hurricane, a flood. We hear about it and it's all over the press. So we put communities back together but an enormous part of what we do is also investing in communities. So take a look at that, the bottom right-hand corner on uh, slide three. In the COVID uh, crisis itself, $280 million in COVID donations have been made by insurance companies. U.S. insurers um, in the auto world, because people weren't driving around, have returned 14, or, I'm sorry, 14 billion in premiums to policyholders. Imagine the difference that that's made in people's lives. 
there's sort of example after example of how the insurance industry impacts and helps um, folks day to day traveling on. So just some background. I like to tell the, the story of insurance and risk transfer because we know that um, folks buy insurance, whether you're a person or you're a major company, you buy insurance because there are really three things that you can do with risk. Um, you can ignore it. Well, I won't make um, dynamite. Instead, I'll make firecrackers that don't explode. Um, so you can um, avoid it, you can ignore it, or you can transfer it. When we transfer it, there are lots of ways you can transfer. You can just say, you're going to be responsible for it and you're going to hold me harmless. I think you had a session earlier in the summer about contractual liability. Um, so you can uh, transfer the risk to somebody else or you can buy insurance. So this bridge is telling us about Mr. or Mrs. Insured. I like to refer to it as Mr. and Mrs. IBM who have people and assets all over the world and Mr. and Mrs. IBM decide uh, that for certain of their risks, like for workers' compensation or for their buildings, for their assets, they want to um, buy insurance. But we talked about those five or 6,000 different insurance companies. How do Mr. and Mrs. IBM figure out what to buy, from whom to buy it, and how much to spend for it? They typically are working with an agent who gives them that advice, an advisor. And we call them a retail agent because they're working directly with an insured. Sometimes the risks or the insurance needs that the buyer has are so complicated that the retail broker has to access different distribution modes. So they may work with a wholesale broker or a program administrator. They may go to a managing general agent they may have to go to a variety of different places in order to uh, meet all their needs. That's where the ENS marketplace comes into play. And perhaps there's a need for some reinsurance as well. So all of those different component pieces that you see around that bridge come together, depending upon the complexity of those um, needs that Mr. and Mrs. IBM have in order to come up with a solution or the promise to um, make Mr. and Mrs. IBM whole in the event um, there's a disaster or some sort of an insurable uh, crisis. So I like to table set around sort of insurance and it's very basic uh, as I start talking about specialty companies and how we differentiate in the space. So before I move forward, any questions from anybody? Excellent, I'm seeing some heads doing this and that. Love it. So there are a couple of different kinds of insurance companies. Solutions come in lots of different um, shapes and forms. Um, we think about the standard insurance companies, so I'm on slide five, as being the more traditional name brands that you hear about. Chubb and Travelers and Zurich and Hartford, the ones that you see on TV, Aflac, the ones that are um, advertising to sort of uh, general buyer. And then we've got a group that we call the specialties. That's where Arch comes into play. And then we have um, another kind of insurance company that we call direct writers. And that's when they um, work directly with the insured buyer. So that advisor who helps them decide what to buy, from whom to buy it, and how much to spend from it is actually an employee of the insurance company. Or you may be buying the insurance online and you don't get any help at all because it's so cookie cutter and straightforward. And then there's the group of insurance companies that um, are true, what we call surplus lines or ENS carriers. So those are the four general kinds of baskets that we um, line insurance companies up into. I like to point to the tremendous collaboration that takes place within the insurance company depending upon how much time you've spent with an insurance company or with different insurance companies, you may not necessarily have appreciation for all of the different roles that um, sort of exist within the insurance company. 
and how those different roles um, become um, the underwriting model, the servicing model, the identity or the brand of the insurance company. So let me give you some examples. You think about actuarial science, um, the math that goes into making insurance work. Um, life insurers are huge on data. Um, in the ENS marketplace, we talk about the 100 year flood plan. So all sorts of number crunching goes in to um, help the companies that specialize in that space figure out what their um, product and portfolio is gonna look like. At Arch, the president of our company is an actuary. And many of our business unit leaders are actuaries because we go after the more complex, more sophisticated buyer and all of that actuarial science that goes into the number crunching is an important part of who we are. Some insurance companies are um, super advanced in the part of um, IT, how they deliver the customer experience, or in using predictive analytics, all of our data, so that we can use artificial intelligence to help our underwriters make better decisions. So let me give you an example. One of the things that we've done at Arch is um, we've studied all of the claims that have come into the company in the 19 years that we've been writing insurance. And we gave every kind of claim a one, a two, or a three, with a one being those almost always get set up, investigated, and we just go write a check. Two, they're a little bit more complicated, but not especially. And then threes, those require level of expertise. So we've done something um, that's groundbreaking in the insurance industry. We're not treating all of our claims the same anymore. The ones that come in at one, as ones, we're just setting them up and writing checks. We're not wasting a lot of time doing investigation. We're not wasting a lot of time analyzing. We don't treat them the same as the more complicated. So we're using all of our predictive analytics tools to generate a better return around those simpler things. And we think it'll give us a great reputation in the industry for being a quick claims payer and being more strategic around the way we handle claims. Um, some of the other ways that insurance companies differentiate is, look at that bottom right-hand corner. Um, are they insurance companies that are focused on the risk management buyer? For those of you that are working with um, large corporations, that's what we refer to the large buyer as the more sophisticated, the more complex. Are they insurance companies that are environmentally conscious? Are they focused on um, green workspaces? Because that's part of their branding and what makes them up. And then where are they with social governance, diversity, inclusion, um, being socially responsible in the world at large? We hear about that a lot when we think about investment strategies, but that's part of the far fiber that makes up insurance companies as well. Part of those folks and that collaboration helps us make a decision about whether or not we're going to use what we refer to as a standard market solution or perhaps a non-standard market solution. On the standard side, you might have a cookie cutter you know, plain old everyday named insurance company, or you might have a specialty. Um, in the non-standard space, you probably have more specialty solutions based on the uniqueness of the um, solutions that get addressed in that space. Regardless of whether you're on the standard side or you're on the non-standard side, you still are focused on creativity, and innovation, differentiation among underwriting tools, complexity, how complicated is the risk that you're trying to um, solve. And what's really cool about all of it is, regardless of where you are in the industry, um, there are lots of choices around the direction that insurance companies take and um, those of us that work in the industry um, have an opportunity to um, navigate.
it's really a lot of fun when you dig in to think of the different personalities of the companies. So why would you choose a specialty? We've talked, you know, sort of a little bit about the different kinds of insurance companies and what makes their personalities and um, sort of some of the common features among insurance companies. So Arch is a specialty. Why do I like working at um, Arch? Because we, we um, want to differentiate by using our brain power as opposed to using um, our labor. So let me tell you what that means. Um, our underwriters want to look at every single account on its own. Um, every account stands on its own merit. Every opportunity has a certain set of risk factors and we um, do what we call dig in and evaluate each risk based on its own merit. As opposed to insurance companies who class underwrite. If it's a metal worker, small, medium, or large, that falls in my basket. Um, we like to look at um, opportunities where there are customers who are underserved. So what does that mean? Um, lots of companies like to write plain vanilla um, because it's easy, it's cookie cutter, it's box underwriting. Um, there's not a lot of, um, um, there's not a lot of uh, variability, risk to risk to risk. So we like to say you don't have to be that smart in order to figure out what's a good right, and what's not a good right. Um, and if you're working with a market that's underserved, and we'll get to some examples of those in a minute, um, you probably can charge more money and therefore um, generate a better profit or return for your uh, decision to underwrite a particular risk. Um, a lot of emerging industries can't find insurance solutions in the standard marketplace because there's something unique or different about them. Um, many of the specialty companies are about um, innovation and doing something different, solving a, solving a problem a different way. Those are some of the examples and some of the component pieces that go into making a specialty company. So if you flip to nine, these are all examples of industries or classes or kinds of buyers who might look to a specialty insurance company because there are few options, underserved market, or they're more complex. It's new and emerging. You think about cyber. Um, you think about some of the exposures that are um, related to kidnap and ransom for people who are traveling all over the world in war zones. One of the um, offerings that Arch introduced um, five years ago is called Defense Base Act. So quickly, you're familiar with workers' compensation. When um, U.S. employers bid on government contracts, and they send their American employees over to Beirut or Iran or Iraq to help with um, training or education or linguistical needs, um, that U.S. employer has to provide workers' compensation for those folks overseas. So one of the things that Arch does is we write what's referred to as Defense-Based Act cover for these huge government contractors that are sending their employees overseas. Lots of actuarial work goes into figuring out the right rates based on what the experience looks like, but there are very few companies who will do that. Very much a specialty. You think about um, earthquakes and floods. Lots of companies say, I'm not gonna write earthquake insurance, I'm not gonna write flood insurance because it could wipe out my balance sheet. That's a very common kind of insurance that specialty companies write. You look at the celebrity, the athletes, the arms, the legs, the voices, you know, who's going to insure Tom Brady's arm? Who's going to insure 
um, the one that's always um, given as famous is Marlene Dietrich's legs. We've got to have somebody present day who's got a great set of legs that we wouldn't want to lose. But trying to give you a sense for the different sorts of things that specialty companies get involved in. And then quickly before we um, finish up, I wanted to tell you a little bit about Arch and how we differentiate specifically in the space. So we're all about um, being a good partner. And what we mean by that is that when we enter into a relationship with an insured buyer, when, with a broker partner, we want to be viewed as the company that does the right thing, that is always willing to listen. And as a result of bringing great solutions to the table, we develop what we call first call relationships. So if you've got something that's a challenge, that requires a story, that is a little bit more complex, that needs a um, specialty solution, we want to be your first call. How do we do that as a company? Um, we do it by spending a lot of time getting feedback from our customers, clients, from our brokers, from our claimants around what we did right and what we did wrong and what we should change, and then make it, taking actions on those decisions. Um, one of the things that differentiates Arch in the space is you heard me talk about data and the actuaries. So we want to make fact-based, data-driven decisions. We want the metrics and the numbers to spell out why a transaction or an insurance decision is going to generate a good long-term return for our client buyer as well as for us. We like to say we like to work with clients that are like-minded that um, appreciate the strength of um, Arch. And we t when we talk about the strength of Arch, we're talking about how strong our balance sheet is because when you think about insurance, some claims get solved really quickly and others take as many as 20 years. Come on, be surprised at that. To resolve. They say that workers' compensation um, is a long-term tale because injuries may linger, come back, linger, come back, drag on. So we call those long-term tail um, kinds of coverages. Um, property insurance, you can generally figure out how much the building was worth when it burnt down. You might fight over, do you need, uh, you know, 250 million for it or do you need 275 million for it? But you can generally get your hands around a property claim uh, quicker. So we call those short, short term. Um, so we're very um, focused on data so that we're making fact-based data-driven decisions so that the transaction can hold up for the long term. Um, one of the things that um, we've become uber invested in in the last number of years and we use it as a differentiator is um, getting it right the first time, quality um, with speed, as opposed to just plain old speed. Many of our competitors have invested in um, technology, but they haven't gotten the quality down. And when we reach out to our customers, they tell us that insurance companies in 2020 ought to be able to issue things quickly and get it done right first time. So that's something that we're investing a lot of uh, money into. And then the um, next piece of the how do we get it done is about empowering our people and our teams. John Mentz, who's the uh, president of the company, whenever you ask him, so do you want to be involved in this, John? Um, do you want to have a place at the table? Uh, do you want to be one of the decision makers on this? He always says, make the decision at the lowest level. Why do you have to run everything up the uh, flagpole? So we're all about um, empowering our people to be able to be on the front line and give our customers and our clients the very best service because they've got confidence in the tools that we've given them to make the right decisions to serve the client. And then what do we think the result of this will be? We think that we'll be known as an insurance company who is a specialty because we're serving underserved markets, working with more complex um, accounts 
and making our customers appreciate sort of the differentiation and the great customer experience. And that's how we um, aspire to bring it all together. And then lastly, some of the um, things that we're doing in order to um, bring it all to action, to um, think about the how, the what, and the why are around our priorities. So you heard me use that first call piece. So we're all about the voice of the customer. Uh, we call it VOC. It's not a brand new idea. It's about making sure that we're reaching out and actively listening and acting. There's that risk-based data driven piece that I talked about, the speed and the quality. So that's what that first call is all about. And then around people, it's about developing, attracting, and retaining. We are not a particularly diverse industry, and my company is not a particularly diverse employer. But we've challenged ourselves to do a much better job at that and are actively working to be far more um, diverse and inclusive. The president of the company is very fond of saying that you need to write it down, make a promise, hold yourself accountable, and keep tracking in order to make sure that you're headed in the direction that you want to go to. And then the uh, next piece that we're thinking about is where do we want to be in the future? So I'll close with this. Um, Mark Grandison, who is uh, chairman of the company, and there's a uh, quote that Mark left us with a little while ago, the market cap, and that's representative of the value of um, the um, company in the stock market. So our market cap is about 14 billion. Mark Grandison wants to see us become a true market leader and be 35 billion in market cap in the next four maybe five years, he says. So it's all about investing in the people and providing really better mousetraps, which will attract us to the best kind of buyers to generate those long-term returns so that we can be a consistent provider in the marketplace, always differentiating by our people because that's what the relationships are all about and that's how you get it done, which is why I wanted to see some of those eyeballs. So in closing, um, my note from um, Mark, you've probably heard that the insurance market is tightening. That means it's harder to buy insurance. Um, and Mark cautions us and says during this time when it's more difficult for our partners to find capacity solutions, we need to be ever vigilant to make sure that we're out in front of our customers and our clients, we're listening to them. We need to remain humble. Um, and if we do that effectively, we'll be appreciated for the solutions that we bring to the table and the relationships that we develop. And in doing so, that's how we'll become that strong leader in the marketplace. So it is 1.36. We plan to be on the telephone for 45 minutes talking about um, specialty companies today. So before we um, close up, did anybody have any questions? Is there anything I can clarify for anybody? Hi, this is Gilbert here. I'm sorry to have webcam today, but I had a question. Um, when hiring a new employee to serve the clients, are there certain personality traits that you're looking for? So that's a great question. Um, and the answer to that is, you bet. Mm -hmm. um, we think that we can teach folks how to underwrite. Um, we think that we can teach you how to um, analyze and assess. What's really important and what we look for when we're um, uh, encouraging folks to um, join the industry and specifically ARCH, it's all about um, personality and cultural fit. Um, if you're not interested in people and curious and a go-getter, um, if you don't like competition, if you don't like working on a team, um, we're probably not a very good solution for you. 
Um, we have this thing called um, the Arch Experience that we've um, rolled out, and we did it specifically. Well, we were intending to do it anyway, but as soon as we got into um, COVID and we realized that everybody was going to be remote, we were very concerned about folks being able to connect and what was all of that going to look like. So the Arch Experience is um, 15 behaviors, uh, like being committed, voice of the customer, be, um, be, um, um, be, oh, uh, be committed to um, excellence, um, be the solution, um, be competitive. Yeah, you know, just mm -hmm. r r y yes. Um, so these 15 behaviors all track back to our culture. And it's about being the solution, being customer, being customer focused, using our data and our tools and encouraging our, our, our teammates um, to collaborate and um, grow together. So when we think about folks that we want to bring to the industry, it's really what would make logical sense, Gilbert. Uh, we want can-do attitude. We want curious. We want... Um, uh, an interest in people, um, solution uh, providers, creativity, those sorts of things. Because we think we can teach you the business. Does that make sense? I'm sold. I think I need to get into insurance. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's really. It's really a great industry. Um, my daughter uh, was graduating from college. And she was interviewing um, for a position. I love telling this story. And at the very end of um, the interview, the 98-year-old uh, man said to her, um, so where do you see yourself in uh, 20 years? Um, what do you think that you might like to do? And she said, oh, I'm going to stay in the insurance industry. I'd like to um, work for a large company. I want to contribute. I want to you know, do exactly what my mother does. And the guy looked at her and he goes, what? And she said, you know, I grew up with my mother in the insurance industry. We always had really good um, conversations around the dining room table. She'd tell us what was going on with her client. She'd ask us to help problem solve with her. Um, she goes on great trips. She plays a lot of golf. She goes to really nice restaurants, um, spends a lot of time with um, clients. I'm all over that. I mean, who, who, who doesn't like being with people that you like? Solving problems. Anyone else out there? Connie, I have a question, if you don't mind. Sure. I think I heard you say that um, you're trying to grow from 14 billion to 35 billion. You bet your baby. In five years, so very impressive. And I wish you very good luck with that. Um, is that, do you, are you planning acquisitions or is that organic growth that you're looking at? Um, great question. Um, Arch is presently um, through the first two quarters of 2020 growing at 24%. And that's not by acquisition. That's by being um, opportunistic. That's by identifying um, underserved markets. It's by introducing new products. Um, we have made some acquisitions um, into what we call third-party capital or distribution strategies so that we can put more product into the marketplace by spreading risk or by delivering um, a product in a different way using technology. Um, we introduced a um, speed-to-market process last year specifically for the purpose of introducing new product into the marketplace quickly. Mariah, was there something you wanted to say? You were bouncing yellow a couple times. I am good. My question was actually related to growth as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. All good. And Thank it's actually you. making its market cap. Um, our revenue right now is um, about $8.2 billion. Okay. Great. Thank you. You bet. Anybody else? Okie dokie, smoky. All right. I hope that that was helpful. 
I hope that um, you learned a little bit about um, specialty companies um, and why the specialty company exists, sort of what we bring to the marketplace, and a little bit about how um, Arch is getting it done.